Hello, everyone, and welcome to the HackFS Filecoin uh, Storage and Retrieval on Filecoin Part 2 session. Uh, joining us today is Longfei Wong, who will be taking us through this session. And with that, I'll pass it over to Longfei to get the session started. Thank you. So you all be able to see my slides, right? So if that's uh, that works fine. And I'm going to start today's session. Hey everyone, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're at, uh, and uh, welcome to listen to this talk about the storage and travel part two. I hope you guys have uh, spent some time and, and listen to uh, what Matt has talked about last time and to be uh, about like making storage deal on Filecoin through smart contract, either through like a client contract or through the aggregation. So uh, this topic will be part two and after what Matt's talk, and we'll talk a little bit more about what what afterwards if you make a storage deal on Filecoin, what it can do to replicate, to renew, or maybe to repair uh, on the Filecoin virtual machine through a smart contract. So uh, let's uh, maybe introduce to myself a little bit. And my name is Longfei, and I work with the Filecoin developer advocate. And my, now because FBM is super important on that, so we're gonna uh, I'm gonna mainly helping on FBM team as well. So if you guys uh, work with hackathons and you guys stay in the community either through Slack or Discord, you might see my name popping around everywhere. I'm trying to help uh, developers in the community, and hopefully I'm being helpful and be able to bridge you guys uh, with the team product team or. Uh, our engineer team to be able to fix your problem and to providing a better and more stable uh, infrastructure for building things on Filecoin. Cool. And oh. so for, for guys who have been listening and following all the Filecoin workshop, and you might have ever seen this slides a uh, thousands of times, but I think that's a great slide to be able to tell what the Filecoin plan is and why we're doing things at a certain stage of the a development phase. If you are not and the first time jump into this uh, workshop and then uh, I will give you a brief talk about why, what Filecoin are doing and, and why we bring FVM on board at this period of time. So obviously uh, Filecoin is building a decentralized network, decentralized uh, storage uh, to provide a storage for all the like web two or three words. Uh, decentralized storage, obviously the storage is most valuable things for us. Starting from like 2000, 2017 or 2020, uh, 2020, we launched the mainnet. Uh, we are putting a lot of effort trying to providing the decentralized capacity into the network, trying to onboard a storage provider, trying to onboard storage provider to provide a more stable uh, the storage through the global. That's the first that we've been doing, and we've been doing a great job since 2020. And then the network has grown a lot. Uh, you know, like if you look at uh, our blockchain explorer or any static file, you, a static uh, website, you will find out that the storage capacity, regardless of raw storage capacity or that just the storage capacity through Filecoin Plus have grown rapidly until, until like 12, 12 or 13 gigabit right now. And after that, obviously we want to onboard data on Filecoin. We want to onboard the data, like valuable data set and uh, humanity data set on Filecoin either through Web2 applications or collaborations or providing the storage for all sort of the Web3 applications platform like Ethereum, Solana, and Near or any blockchain to onboard the data on Filecoin. And that's growing uh, very great as well. And uh, the, the, the third step is what we're doing right now. We are trying to bring the service on Filecoin and harvest the real value stored on Filecoin, which is data. And then providing the computation through this data, through the uh, either through the uh, data or through the uh, state status of the data, state of this data on Filecoin, and to be able to build another web web scale applications on Filecoin, and that's where we bring Filecoin virtual machine to the picture to be able to provide the uh, on-chain programmability through the data through the uh, da state of the data on Filecoin, as well as uh, other the. Uh, computations like Bacalao, things like that. And uh, this is the brief idea of what we are doing and uh, why Filecoin virtual machine is important and uh, uh, how it will bring the programmer into the Filecoin network. I think now we've been talking about Filecoin 
And we've been talking about how Falcon is providing the data for for uh, Web 2, Web 3. Now, because we are at a Hackerfest and we're trying to get uh, developers to interested to be on Filecoin. And so the most important part is how are we going to build on Filecoin and what kind of a service and what kind of tools that we can uh, use. I think for developers, we want to be clear that uh, you, we want to be clear to developers that based on what you're building and you need to find the right builder's path to go to follow, to use the right tools to build. And we don't want the developers to bump into the road that they just completely using the wrong tool and the build, the building things uh, that would not expect them to do. So this diagram prepared by Sarah, one of, uh, uh, one of our team member on FBMT is great. It's very clear and then guide the developer through the process of picking the right tool and then thinking from the perspective of what the product needs. So we can look at this diagram from two sides. The left side, the green -ish part is if you want to build something more programmably on Filecoin, which means if you want to using the programmable storage on Filecoin. And then the right side is if you don't, and for the applications that you're building, you just want to store your data in a decentralized manner. That is, you just want to put your data in the Filecoin or IPFS network, and you don't need to handle or like uh, making storage deal and monitor the storage data or doing the renew or replication, that kind of a uh, job. And you will go this way. For example, if you're building an NFT project, if you're building a game flag project, like AI or social device, you just want to store your data in a decentralized manner out of the control of any central party, and you will go this way. All you need to do is use this storage service, Web3 Storage, NFT Storage, Lighthouse, or S3. Now they change to Falcon data tools. So, and then all you need to do is just store data and then all the, those storage servers will take care of the storage deal making process. So actually all those uh, storage, storage service are the builders for the left side of this diagram. This diagram. So the, they are building something on the Filecoin and those storage service will build on Filecoin storage. storage. We need to make storage deal on Filecoin network and monitor the file, uh, the storage status and be able to renew and repair. And then regard, and also if they, if the data are small, they also need to do the aggregation. They are, if, if the, you are building some data store service like Web3 storage or S3, and you mainly going to link on the left side of the picture, or if you're building something like we've been talking about data DAO, perpetual storage and storage automation then you also need to go all the, with the programmable storage side. And if, you, if you're storing some data on smaller size or, or less than four gigabit, which is what, what we distinguish of smaller size, the smaller data or large data on Filecoin, and you probably need to go through the aggregation, or you, if you're storing data larger than four gigabit, you can go on the deal clients. All this have been covered by Matt from the previous session. And then the, one, the thing that I would cover mainly today is if I made a deal on Filecoin, regardless through aggregation or without aggregation, there's a deal landed on Filecoin. We just need to keep monitor and then be able to replicate as many copies as we want and be able to renew, or maybe essentially we'll be able to repair if there's something wrong with the storage deal on Filecoin. So, so today, I think uh, I just want to be clear, if you are in this workshop and if you are interested into building perpetual storage or renewal repair, and you're going to mainly land it on here. But if you're building that, that's how it is. That's the part of the developers we want to track. We want to track developers who are interested in this site and pay more attention to this workshop. And if you're building an NFT or DeFi and the storage service might be the best options for you. Okay. So let's get into it, uh, because everything. What I'm going to talk about today is for the storage deals. I want to go back uh, one step and to refresh everybody's mind on how Filecoin storage works. I think uh, Matt has also covered that in a previous talk, but I'm going to bring it uh, again because that's what will be important for you to understand how we will make some of those process on Filecoin and uh, on, on the Filecoin virtual machine and through smart contract. And what's why why we are doing certain work like why we're doing replication, why we're doing renew, 
and uh, while we're doing things uh, through the aggregation. All right, let's uh, first go through this storage deal making process very quickly. And uh, we'll, so we'll see what we can put on Filecoin virtual machine and what we can do is renew. So if you want, it's a starting with the client spot. If you as a client of Filecoin and you want to store data on Filecoin. So the first step we need to do is, yeah, you can find your wallet and you'll be able, you need to have certain field token uh, in your wallet. So you'll be able to pay the storage service fee and maybe potentially pay a collateral uh, from, from your storage. Or you can use a data cap uh, at, to to find uh, to to store your verified data on Filecoin, and that's the essential part of the using uh, Filecoin. And then once you have that, you want to store data. The first step you need to do is do data preparation. So you need to uh, prepare your data from a regular file into the core file, which is the data format used on Filecoin and IPFS based on the IPLD standard. And you'll be able to retrieve them by the CID. So those the call file can be either saved on the file server or IPFS. Eventually, the storage provider will retrieve this data and then store for you. Once you have that ready, the second step is you need to make a storage deal proposal to the storage providers on Filecoin. Based on what the storage provider requests, based on the geographic of the storage provider. So if the storage provider sees that a proposal come in and that's okay for them, uh, they will accept this deal and then eventually request the data you want to store from the file server or the IPFS. And once they get it done, they will publish this storage deals on chain on the file network. And after going forward, they'll just keep proving the storage they have stored through the proof of replication or proof of space time. So from that, there was something stay on chain, which is deal, storage deal. And then storage deal will have all this information recorded on chain. I won't bring this up because that's the most important value. Uh, the most important paradigm on that deal is starting epoch and end the epoch, which indicates that how long the storage deal will leave on Filecoin network, as well as if this storage deal is active on Filecoin or not. That's very important for renewal storage or repair storage or making sure that we store the enough replications for this clients as they wish. And as you know, this whole process happens on chain and off chain, obviously. And from this picture, you can see data, data preparation, storage deal proposal, data transfer, all this happen off chain. And then deal publish proof of the deal and then storage deal also on chain. So with, now with FVM coming in, we are trying to move some of the component on chain through the programmability through, uh, on the smart contract. So. Now, if you imagine that you can start using like a field token to fund uh, your, your storage, and maybe you can have your own token to fund the storage, trying to incentive a data, uh, uh, trying to incentive clients to use, trying to incentive a storage provider, maybe like geographically to incentive. And then uh, the second part we can make it on chain is uh, making storage deal. Like Matt's uh, presentation last time for uh, this is the first part of uh, the process that we can make deal through the client contract, which means you propose deal in the contract and contract will emit the uh, events on chain and the storage provider boost will be able to pick it up and publish deal. All the orange side, the orange part that I put it here will be able to make on chain through smart contract. And another part, most important part I'm going to talk today is we can also make the deal renew, deal repair and deal replication on chain as well. And on chain, we'll be able to monitor all this process and then made it eventually on chain. Before we go into the, all this detail of the renew and replication, I want to bring another concept up is the aggregation, aggregation, the deal aggregation. And Matt also talked about last time. So I want to emphasize a little bit more because that's also something that is very important in the Falcon ecosystem. And I think it's a super interesting idea for developers to build on top of it as well. And you can see there's a, uh, there's a, a QR code down here. If you're interested in building an aggregator, you can just go scan and look at the specs that our product can prepare for you. And you read through and see if it makes sense, if it's something interested for you to build, and then go follow. If you have any questions, just talk to us, to talk to product team of our coin. But essentially, what is aggregation? Why it's needed? You probably heard I talk about data size over and over again, like because there are some data size that we call sector size, which is on Falcon is how big the data you will see, you will restore. 
And then in a file coin, the sector size is 32 gigabit or 60 gigabit. Imagine that if you store like an empty data, which is like a, a few gigabit or maybe at one megabit, how much data you need to store to pack to like 32 gigabit. That's a lot of data you need to pack into there. And uh, it's not economic friendly for the storage provider to pick up the small data and then store. Imagine like 32 gigabit and you put thousands of files into one deal. And it will generate a tons of messages, generate a tons of proof for storage provider to do. So it's like expensive execution, also very, very expensive on gas fee. And imagine all those deals will come a different turn, like how much, how long they want to store, how much they wanted to pay, and what storage provider they need. It's very difficult to handle. So, and that's why we bring aggregation into the picture. So, uh, the, what aggregation do is the aggregator will listen to the files and it'll pack them into uh, one deal and a one part, uh, one deal or maybe a, a call file to and also at the same time generate what we call part size. It's an inclusion proof that you can improve that your file is included in that call into that sector and then be able to verify that as well. Imagine that if you're putting all your files into a black plastic bag, you will not be able to verify. And Parsi is the standard that we bring in to be able to help uh, to verify through in the aggregation. And then in the process of uh, aggregating the files and generating the proof, all could happen on-chain and off-chain as well. On-chain means to smart contract. Off-chain means what uh, Web3 storage or uh, uh, Filecoin data tools are doing. And all th they are building by some of the collaborators in our system as well, like Filecoin data tools, Lighthouse, and Sephora, they are building this. If you're interested building an on-chain aggregator, off-chain aggregator, go uh, scan this code and you'll be able to uh, uh, just learn. And if you want to see some example, maybe you can see the how uh, Filecoin data tools and Lighthouse are building their solution. So keep in mind, aggregation aggregator is very important for handle small deals. And that's what we're going to take as an example for our deal uh, aggregation. Now, deal renew and deal application. We are using we are using the aggregator in this example. But of course, uh, if you are storing some data with larger size, you can directly use a client contract to do it. So let's uh, look at this picture. So now we're, t we're talking about uh, renew. What, what do we call uh, ROS? ROS. Uh, it's a you could do replication as a service, renew as a service, or essentially repair as a service. So what we'll do. And uh, we can look at briefly on this side is if I'm a client and I want to store my data on Filecoin. So if this data are small, first I need to store that with aggregator. So aggregator will have a small contract which will be able to record all the data coming in. And uh, there's going to be aggregation, aggregator part with aggregator function will be aggregate all the files together and then generate the proof essentially send the proof back to the clients or record the proof uh, in, in the smart contract. And that's a lot of, once you successfully make a storage deal and a storage deal will leave on Filecoin network, regardless it's to aggregator or not aggregation aggregator. And this deal will be staying on Filecoin network uh, with a certain time, which is the lifetime. And now minimum is 180 days. And possibly something might go wrong with uh, the sector. Sector might go down because the storage provider has some issue maintaining that. And so after you make a deal successfully on Filecoin, we need to constantly monitor these deals. So first making sure all the sector are healthy enough and then the deal isn't expired. Or if the clients want to store multiple replica and want to make sure that that's enough applications exist on Falcon network. All this has to be monitored uh, through smart contract or through uh, uh, what we call ROS node as well. So if anything goes wrong, we need to make sure that we, uh, we, we kick off another storage deal to repair or to renew based on uh, what we service, uh, what, what the, the, uh, the developers are building on. And then if you, are interested if you want to know more here's the qr code as well you can scan and then go to the uh, spec page that we are being preparing oh i didn't i've got to show so this is aggregation uh spec page and also the storage deal renew a uh, process as well and 
keep in mind, uh, this is just the uh, starting point of preparing a spec and we are providing the minimum features required to be able to make the storage renew or storage application works. And obviously there are a lot of more detail could be added in there. And if you're interested, uh, go find it out and uh, find out and then do expanding that knowledge. All right. So let's talk a little bit more into the detail on each part of this, how it'll work. And I'm not going to spend too much time talking about how to make a storage deal through aggregator, aggregator because uh, Matt has covered it last time. So uh, I'm just going to go it over very quick. And uh, the example of here of uh, making storage deal through aggregator, the, the important part comparing with what Matt talked about is we bring the, uh, the, the application part, which is involving updating data, um, uploading data to aggregator and then be able to submit this CID to aggregator as well. At the same time, it might need to register the re re renew job or replication job or repair job with what we call the uh, uh, ROS nodes in the future. And then ROS node will be able to monitor those. And that's what we expect uh, developers or we expect the builders to build uh, for this. Uh, in, in, uh, maybe it's going to be a part of the perpetual storage, part of the a uh, storage service that they are working on. So, and then the process are quite simple. And uh, if you're making a storage deal with uh, aggregator, you're going to submit your data and submit your CI, 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 CID to aggregator. And then aggregator smart contract will be able to monitor that. If they received a request of storing data and they're going to emit an event of receive a request. And once the request come in and have, have enough data to pack into one sector, the aggregator will do the job and then uh, uh, aggregate all the deal, generate the pass I, and then be able to uh, call back the complete function. So the complete function will record the, the proof and then the, the, all the deals, the deals including the CID in the aggregator smart contract. And that will be able to be queried by uh, like, uh, by, by the pass I, I mean, the, the nodes as well as the, the smart contract, which I will cover next. And once you have, this is the process of making storage deal. Once the storage deal is, is finished, then, then the aggregator smart contract will be able to record all the deals have been made for that CID and included that CID into the deal process. And that's the, the first step of making storage deals through aggregator. Uh, keep in mind, uh, that we are taking a Filecoin data tool edge as the example here. And if you're interested, you can also use them as well. And there's a smart contract uh, having provided by, uh, by the aggregator and it has the submit function, a complete function that I demonstrated in this, I uh, talked about in this diagram. And they also have a get or deal function will be eventually used by uh, the deal status, deal status smart contract as well. And once that process, once the deal is made successfully on chain, the next step will be, we'll keep monitoring those deals. And if something goes wrong, the ROS node will be able to take actions. Uh, here I'm going to take replication and renew as example and repair will be coming later as well. So if we, if you remember earlier, I said, if when an application make a storage deal, and you can also re uh, register a renew job and a replication job with the ROS node, with this node. So eventually this node uh, will work with DO status, small contract, and monitor those deals on Filecoin through, through, through the aggregator. So how that works is in there's a DO status, DO status small contract, in a small contract, and you're going to keep, uh, you're going to uh, get uh, all the active deals uh, through the aggregator smart contract. So we send the request to the aggregator smart contract and get a list of the deals that including the CID have made on chain. And then they will check with on Falcon network, calling the building actors to, uh, to look if those deals are still active or not. And once they get data back and it will emit a events and tell you meet the events uh, about which deal is active or not. And eventually the Rossner will be able to uh, listen to those events and then calculate if there are enough active deals exist for this CID. 
So if not, for example, if the clients want to have uh, 10 replications on, on Filecoin, but we can only find nine active deals, which means this is one missing. And uh, it could be a repair and a replication as well. So uh, the Rust node has to take action to start a replication work or start a repair work, kick off not a new proposal with uh, aggregator and then uh, activate a deal for, for these clients. This is the brief process, which involves a lot of uh, monitoring, a lot of uh, uh, customer logic into that replication as well. And uh, that works the same for the renewed job. The only little bit difference is on the deal status contract. We are going to look at is there any deal expires within certain epoch. And this, those uh, list of deals are also requested from the aggregator smart contract. And you'll be able to get a, a list of deals that have been made to include that CID in. And for each of the deals, we'll look at the building actor and then to look at the, the deal term to make sure if it's expired or not. If it's close to expire, we're going to emit an event, and those uh, expired deals events will be listened by the ROS node, and ROS node will be decide if if there's a new deal needs to pick, kick off uh, to do the renew. And all this are the brief process of uh, what a deals monitor and what ROS node should do. So like I mentioned earlier, this is a very, very minimal features that we have put into the spec to make sure that this renew as a service or replication as a service works fine end to end. And But obviously there are more that we can add into this future. For example, if we look at the deal status smart contract, currently what we designed it for is uh, for what the client has stored for the CID and uh, this contract will be able to get a list of the deals and keep monitor those deals periodically. So there are two functions that we provide. One is get active deals, which we'll use to determine if there are enough replications for this CID on chain. And then the second one is get expiring deals, which is used to determine if there's any deal expiring that we need to renew for it. So this is a very basic function, but like if you think about more, and you will think you you probably will get out, oh, but like when exactly should I monitor those uh, contract? When should I when exactly should I monitor the deal? Do I need to get Oracle into the picture? How do I do a cron job to make sure that uh, I don't run that uh, status check too often? And maybe like if the, if there's new renew and repair coming, uh, what's the logic should I should I do right? Should I should I uh, repair? Should I renew? Uh, based on what the clients ask for, or maybe I can renew uh, in a different location and pick the different uh, storage provider to, to do that. And how to pay, how the clients will pay the renew service or repair service. Those are a lot of more detail you can add and I think uh, for this kind of a renew and repair Rust, Rust uh, service there. And as for the Rust node as well, and we'll design the Rust node as the point of be able to monitor the deals made, we have made through the aggregator. And then also be able to uh, more, help monitor the expiring deals or active deals uh, and the, taking the, actually kicking off the job uh, of a renewal deal or replica deal or repair deal with uh, uh, aggregator or not aggregator of our coin. And so all this are very detailed spec are included into uh, this QR code if you scan and you'll be able to find it. And that's that's the part we are pulling it out. And uh, if, if there's any developers are interested into building a replication renew as a service, and you can go follow and go read this note and read this spec and welcome anyone to build it for it. And if you're building a, like, uh, a perpetual storage or if you're building uh, a storage service, you're also interested to build this and also very welcome to do. So if you feel free to reach out to us if you have any question. And all this document has been put it out uh, into our link to tree. Uh, if you're interested, you can scan and get all the information uh, we are looking for, like aggregator specs, aggregator specs, or this uh, renew repair service spec. And also if you can follow us on Twitter, and we have a, a Twitch happen every month to talk about all this in de to detail. I think I, I first uh, think in my 
I might don't need 30 minutes, but I, I, after I'm going through, I feel like a lot of information to digest. And I hope after this session, you'll be able to go back and have uh, the, the picture of how the, the deal process is uh, of Alcoin looks like. And uh, maybe have the aggregation in mind why it's needed and having the, uh, have the clear picture of why we need a renew, why I need to repair, why I need to replication in that picture. And if you are interested in building it, just uh, keep following us. And if you have any question, maybe you can ask now or maybe talk, ask us on Slack or Discord. Okay, that's all my content for today. Thank you. Cheers, Longfei. Yes, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat now or take yourself off mute and ask. And as Longfei said, um, uh, if you don't have anything now, go please definitely take advantage of the Discord partner channels as well to reach out to Longfei and other partners uh, via that route. Okay. If there are no other questions or no questions, uh, thank you, Longfei, for the great presentation. And thank you, everybody, for attending. And uh, yeah, we will see you all uh, later. Cheers. Have a good one. Thank you, everyone.